What's up guys? Today, I am pumped for this video. This is going to be on product research for 2021. And I'm going to be doing this with real world examples. That means you're actually going to see real products I'm looking at right now. You can look further into those if you wish. And I urge you to really stay till the end because I'm going to give you my verdict on each as well as my verdict overall on which one I would actually choose and why. I myself have had failed products, successful products. So I hope that you learn a bit from that as well. Now, over the past couple days, I've been using AMZ Scout to do my research. And guys, I got to tell you, this tool is really good. There's a lot of little hidden secret features that have really been helpful during my process. And I think it's going to help save you time during research. You're going to see a lot of them demonstrated today. Now, as I've been doing my research, I realized there's three primary things I'm looking for with products now. Number one is higher prices because I know most sellers are looking for price points around $20, $25, maybe $30 now that that kind of that cat's out of the bag. But they're not looking at $40, $50. And I'm going to talk more about this as we do it. But going with a higher price means you're competing with fewer sellers, particularly fewer newer sellers. Secondly, there's certain costs in this business which are fixed. For example, based on the size of your product or size of your shipment. FBA fees are related to your product size, not your product's price. So if you have a product over here and a product over here that are the exact same size and weight, but this one sells for $60, this one sells for $20, they get the same FBA fee. They're also going to get the same international shipping cost. And so if we deduct those off the price, you can see that this one is left with a lot more money, but also the percentage of those costs is much smaller. It impacts the seller far less. So you're leveraging fixed costs with higher prices as well. Number two, I look for development potential, especially creative development potential. What I mean by this is some products lend themselves to you improving them, making them better, making them visually more creative and fitting for the customer, while others do not. They might be really functional in some cases where the customer doesn't care how it looks or what you've added to it. So we're looking for products that lend themselves to us for us to develop them further. And thirdly, I look for low competition slash an acceptance of low reviews by the customer, either of those. So a low competition market is generally just going to have lower reviews, whereas an acceptance of low reviews by customers, you might have quite a few high review competitors there, but you notice that the customers also buying from low review sellers. In fact, sometimes they're buying more from a low review seller, someone with like 40 reviews, over a high review seller, someone with like 600 reviews, that's also going to tell you that it's relatively easy to enter this market. So these are the three big things I just want you to keep in the back of your mind as we do this. Higher prices, development potential, lower competition, or an acceptance of low reviews by the customer. Step number one is our 2021 product research criteria. Here, we're looking for a price above $40, monthly sales above $300, reviews of less than $100, a weight of under 4.75 pounds. You can round that up to under 5 pounds if you wish. And a size beneath 18 by 14 by 8 inches, also called large standard size. Step number two. This is to use AMZ Scout's product database to find products. Now you can see it on screen here. I'm going to be searching for the USA. If you're in another market, you can change that over here. It does support all these markets. In here, we're going to put a price from $40, reviews up to 100 reviews, and estimated sales above 300. We can also choose our categories over here, and I'm going to choose these three today. Once you've done that, we can click on Find Products. And at this point, you're going to see a whole lot of results on screen here. As you can see, all of these results. And there's a couple things I want you to keep in mind as you go through this, which is going to help you narrow quickly. Number one, we're avoiding anything that is seasonal. 
to, we're going to avoid dangerous products and you might want to avoid PPE products for now because of the extra verification needed. Three, we're going to avoid those that belong to a very big brand name. We don't want to compete with big brands. Four, an optional one, but you want to avoid products that have a lot of sizes or variations if you want to keep it simple when starting. Because remember, those are going to cut up your MOQ or cut up your order quantity a lot when ordering. Five, even at this point, you can start avoiding those that don't have development potential. There's no real way to improve them. And six, I would avoid products that are the next big fad. Think about fidget spinners, things like that, maybe even PPE currently. It's stuff that's going to have a huge spike and then a huge drop off. I'm more long term in my approach and I recommend the same for you. So as we go through this, we're keeping that top of mind. For example, here, PPE, probably not going to do this. Over here, you can see a office chair or gaming chair. This is going to be a very big product. Now, we didn't have the size option to declare up here. However, this is going to be too big. So that's another thing you're just keeping top of mind. Over here, you can see smart dimmer plug. Now this I already know is a very competitive market. But what I want to point out here is that this is a very difficult thing to develop. It's something really difficult for you to take and make your own. It's very functional in nature. People don't mind the design, etc. They just want this type of product to fulfill the function. And so we won't be doing that one. So here's one that might be good. You can see this is a cake pan set of four and it immediately stands out to me because this is something we might be able to make our own. It's something that's quite lightweight. It's probably pretty small because each one can go inside the other. So a small package has a really good price point here, only has 10 reviews. And you can see they're doing an estimate sales of 29,000, which is unbelievable. Now that's so high, it makes me think maybe it's a variation on another listing, but we'll see. Let's save this to have a look at. And anytime you want to save a product from this list, you simply click this plus icon over here. And once you've clicked the plus icon, this actually goes into your product tracker. Now at the top of the page, see it says tools. If we drop this down, you can see here is the product tracker. So we get the database here and the tracker here, which is going to be full of products you've clicked the plus on. And then here, this is really interesting. So you can see this looks like a whiskey glass set. And this is a product that is small. It sells for a premium, as you can see here. We have very low reviews and we're doing 1500 sales a month, 1400 sales a month. This is a really healthy, realistic number here as well. And this is something with a lot of development potential. It's something we could really make our own and change for customers. This is the opposite of functional. Although the product is functional, people care a lot about how this product looks, the accessories, the overall aesthetic of the product. So this is a really good example of a potential product. So we're going to save this one as well. And then I'm going to find at least two more and I'm going to share those with you in the product tracker. So once you save those, click on tools, come to your product tracker. And here in the tracker, you're now going to have your list of potential products. Here, we are going to be looking at the whiskey glass set. We're going to be looking at glass jars for food storage. And we're going to be looking at a photography turntable. And the last one, of course, is that cake pan set to see if this is not too competitive. So your goal at this point is to find at least five potential products. So now how do you go about actually finding the market for this product on Amazon? Well, this brings us to step number three, which is to use AMZ Scout's reverse ASIN lookup to find your primary keyword. Now, how you want to do this is on this page, you simply want to copy that ASIN. So let's say it was this one. We're going to copy this ASIN and we are now going to come to tools. We're going to go to reverse ASIN lookup and we're going to drop this ASIN in here. Once we've done that, we're going to set the number of words one to eight because we don't want to limit this and find keywords. And at this point, the tool is going and looking at that listing and saying, how are customers finding this listing the most? And that's going to help us establish what our primary keyword is. And on screen here, you can see it's returned keywords, the volume for the month and the relevance to our product. Now, rotating display stand, that's 
quite relevant but this is particularly a photography turntable so i want to see if that is here here we go so photography turntable is here and that's actually going to be our primary keyword it's the most relevant it's actually being typed in on amazon this is how you can check and this was also a keyword at the front of this product's title that's another way you can find your primary keywords and the other competitors in that space they're generally going to put the best keyword at the front of the title and now for each of those products we found, we're going to take this keyword and we're going to go drop it into Amazon. And once we drop that in, we search Amazon. And this is the market that we are going to be evaluating. And we're going to do the exact same for those other products. For the whiskey product, that keyword is whiskey gift set for men. So we're going to put that in. And for the glass jars, it is glass jars food storage. And for the cake pan set, it was cake pan set of four. So at this point, you've discovered your markets, you found their primary keywords, and you're now looking at the specific markets on Amazon. Actually, step number four is to use AMC Scout's data blocks, which are present on the front page. And the reason we're using those is to establish how much demand there is for different offerings and offerings at different review levels. We're also just going to get a general feel for the competition in each market as we look at them next to one another. Step five, use AMZ Scout's Chrome extension to do a deep analysis. So on each of these markets, the same page of the same keyword you used, we can open up the AMZ Scout Chrome extension. It loads up like this and you can see it actually gives you an overall score, which it might even adjust further as this loads, but it's going to give you what is your profit potential, demand potential and competition potential. Now here we can see medium competition, which we would expect with the photography turntable, medium demand, that's to be expected. It's not a huge demand niche, high profit. These do sell at a higher price and we're going to have to see how the profit turns out. We can close that little window and this is what our Chrome extension looks like. You can expand or reduce this box as you wish and you can also personalize this view. I sometimes remove certain ones here to bring price sales and reviews a bit closer together because those are the ones I focus on. It also gives you this cool score here for private label, which a lot of you are focusing on, creating your own product and selling it on Amazon. It gives you a score for those here as well. Now here, what you want to focus on are these columns, price, sales, reviews. And we're looking at, okay, so for these review numbers, how many sales are they doing? And we kind of saw this relationship on the front page, but this kind of gives you a more tabulated view of this. And anytime you click an offering, you can see that you have all these extra options at your disposal as well. The two scores I really like to look at here are saturation score and niche score. Niche score is based on that prior little box that popped up, competition, demand, and profit. Saturation score, in my opinion, even more important. This tells you how many of AMC Scouts users and is kind of expandable to how many sellers are looking for this product or have found this product before. And you want this to be as low as possible. One is the very best score you can get. 10 is the worst. That means everyone's looking for it and discovering it. So one at 0.001% of our users have found this. That's excellent. That's what you're looking for. And then we would do the exact same on our other markets here. So if we bring it up for the whiskey set. So here we can see we have very high profit, medium demand, medium competition. I would say demand is higher here than the photography turntable. So this is good. And then of course our normal columns, but especially here, knee score is seven, really good. And again, saturation score, 0% this time. A very, very small percentage are currently and, and using AMC Scouts tools to find this. So this is a very good thing. Another icon you might see here is this hot icon, which basically means the product's considered hot because its sales grew by 20% or more in the past month. So it's really starting to ramp up. And lastly, we're gonna bring this up on the glass jars here. And in this case, we can see profit is high. Demand is great. As we've seen, there's a lot of sales happening here. 
and competition is medium. I'd even put that at kind of medium high for this market. Again, a niche score of seven here. Saturation, also a one. So other things you can pay attention to here is FBA fees. Remember, you don't want these to be too high. And also listing quality score, LQS as this is going to tell you if people have really got, gone all out on their listings, if you have advanced sellers with you, or if it's a niche full of novice sellers and people not paying that much attention to their listing. For example, if we compare the LQS now to the photography turntable, this one's photography, you can see these LQS scores are actually quite a bit lower. Now, as you do your review research, you want to focus heavily on your three and four star reviews. Those are usually the most objective. They say the product's great, but I wish this. So that's what we're going to be focusing on. And I'm going to break down each of the research findings for these products. And of course, you can find those reviews at the bottom of your competitors listings and you want to be focusing on number one your strongest competitor in the market and number two the customer favorite or favorites that we just identified you want to be focusing on those two sets it could be three or four or five of those competitors your strongest ones and the customer favorites you're going to be following and in those you want to look at the three and four star reviews and so at the bottom here you can actually select four star and then it's only going to show us the four star reviews on the item and you are looking for the complaints that are mentioned the most what's most significant to a broad range of consumers that's what you want to change and as you do this i want you to think of how could i make that visual if you can make a visual change that's much more powerful than a non-visual change if it's on the exterior of the product that's much more valuable to you in terms of marketing than the internals of the product and so as we did this this is what we found for the photography turntable the biggest complaints were that one, the motor makes a noise. It makes a buzzing or humming sound as it turns, obviously, that top turntable. And humming and buzzing is really not good for videos. Number two, the plastics used feel cheap. The product itself feels cheap. Number three, the system is just too complex. People were saying there's far too many options and buttons on the remote. It just needs to be simple. Four, the wire to the product, which powers the product, gets in the way, especially if you're going to use this inside a light box. Five, this was not a complaint, but the customers loved that option where they had different color options for the top. So they could make the white top black if they had a white product, etc. So that's something we're going to keep. And that's something you also want to look for in reviews. What do people say that they love? Because you do want to retain those aspects. And so from that, we can establish that our photography turntable would have to have a quieter motor, higher quality plastic, or maybe be made of aluminium or similar, a simple system with less features, no wire if possible, and that could be achieved with a wireless system or a battery operated unit and five different color options for the top. Now, most of those can actually be visually expressed, especially in like comp competitor versus images we could have on the listing. The most visual ones would be if that unit was wireless and also those different color options for the top. Those are things we could really express and emphasize in the main image to drive click-through rate. And as we saw, the larger and more minimalist turntables are selling a bit better. So we would follow that route and we would have at least a 12 inch diameter turntable that is wireless. And onto our whiskey gift set for men. So in this one, we found the biggest complaints to be the glasses came dirty, scratched, chipped, or with little bubbles in them. So when people opened the product, it really didn't look good. The glasses were often dirty, musty, etc. Two, the glasses themselves, what it was made of, was not crystal glass, as expected. Three, the glasses are strange to hold. So this is a very important thing with this, I've noticed, that it has to be ergonomic and nice to hold those whiskey glasses. Four, the opening experience can be improved. A lot of them complained about this, saying that when you open the product, things have all moved around, the coasters are on top of the glasses, things need to be held in position, and that was not done well. Five, the whiskey stones, which is an accessory often included, do not keep the drink chilled. 
6. The box itself is quite fragile, especially the box hardware, like the hinges on the back etc. Does not feel durable, it feels like it's going to break and fall apart. And 7. The accessories feel cheap, things like the coasters etc, the peripherals. So from that we can establish that our offer would have to have impeccable representation as you open it everything's clean and it looks good for a good opening and gifting experience. Included there is we had one specific secure compartments holding those accessories in place so it doesn't all fall all over the place. Two is we would want to use crystal glass in our whiskey glasses. Three is ergonomic glasses. They need to be very comfortable to hold. Four, high quality coasters and any accessories also need to be high quality. Five, a very high quality box, a strong durable box with strong hardware. And this might actually be why we see some of those crate and tougher looking options selling so well. Now again, most of those changes could be made visual, could be well expressed through a competitor versus image. The most visually expressible would have to be the higher quality box as well as actually using crystal glass, which is something we could represent well in those images. And one that would be like hard to stand out on, for example, is the great representation as a gift. Improving that, it's quite hard to stand out based on that. And why I say so is because so many of these competitors are already advertising that, that their product looks great when it's opened. But in fact, sometimes that's a downfall of their product. But still, the customers don't know yet. So that's something that would pay us back in the future, but it's not something that's going to get you to convert right now more than any other seller. And so with everything we've looked at and strength in mind, we would definitely go with a more tough crate option that we see beginning to sell so well. We would do our own version of that product. That's probably the best route to follow. Moving on to the glass jars for food storage. The biggest complaints we found, the glass is too thin and delicate so it's likely to break. Number two, the glasses are not airtight as advertised. Three, the latches don't open and close well and feel very flimsy. Four, the jars are not dishwasher safe so you can't actually put them in the dishwasher. Five, you cannot stack the jars to save space and of course that depends on which option you're doing. So from this we can establish our offering would have to have thicker glass, an airtight seal, strong latches or no latches at all if we went that route. Included there is it must be really easy to open and close. Four, it must be dishwasher friendly. And five, if we do go the stackable route, they have to be stackable as well. So quite a few of these can be expressed visually in our images. However, again here it would be quite hard to stand out based on emphasizing the airtight nature because everyone's already doing that. And the most visual would have to be using thicker glass as well as latches that aren't flimsy or just using no latches at all as well as dishwasher friendliness. That's something we could also express quite visually. And based on what we see selling really well here, the more simpler thicker glass options, that's what we would follow. We do an all glass option. So the jar and the lid are glass. There's no latch involved and it's an airtight option of at least three jars. And so now that we've chosen our differentiation strategy and what kind of path we're going to follow, keep your proposed product top of mind and we're going to head over to Alibaba. We're going to try and find a base cost of what this product's likely to cost us. Then we're also going to include there a bit of international shipping as an estimate, just so we have an estimated landed cost. Making this available for sale in the Amazon warehouse, how much would that cost us with this product? That's what we're trying to establish here. So you're going to head over to Alibaba here, drop in the same keyword, it might actually be different on Alibaba though. So make sure you just use Alibaba's autocomplete. For example, on this one, you could do photography T and let it autocomplete and it will tell you what they call it. But photography turntable did give us relevant results here. And we're looking again for the item that we would likely want to sell. In this case, at least a 12 inch unit. And here we're doing this based on 500 units. That's what we're going to compare all these products on. Remember, there are more expensive products, this one particularly. 
but at 500 units, we could probably do the photography turntable at $24, including branding. And if we add a $2 per unit international shipping cost to that, just based on the size of that product as an estimate, this is going to cost us about $26 to get to the Amazon warehouse. That is our landed cost for the turntable. If we do the same now for the whiskey glass set, you can see here we found a very similar offering over here as to what we would try and do. And here we would be looking at probably an $8.50 per unit price for 500. The reason I say that is you can see this range here from 213 to 654 and that is for a minimum order of 500 pieces. So if you do the minimum order it's going to be 654. If you do more than the minimum order it's going to come down towards the $2 range. So at 500 it's at least going to cost us that but remember we want to customize and improve this product quite a lot. So I'm going to put this at $8.50 per unit. Shipping is going to be $2 a unit again and we're going to be looking at a $10.50 landed cost for this product. And if we look at our glass food storage jars here, you can see that we would probably get these for about $2 per jar. Now we do have to account for perhaps customizations, branding on the jar, maybe branding on the packaging as well. And since we're not sure if that's going to be included at 500 pieces, it probably would though since the minimum order is one here. But since we're not sure, let's say $2.50 per jar. So that's going to be $7.50 for the manufacturing of three different jars and then we're going to add shipping to that. Now this is probably a larger package when you actually put these jars together and so the shipping might be a little more like $2.50. So here we're probably going to have a landed product cost of about $10. To do this, we're actually going to use AMC Scout's built-in profit calculator using our cost estimates. Now, as you do this, you want to select that option you saw customers favor. So each of you will have your customer favorites in the market that you're looking at, as we do for each of these three. And in this case, this was our customer favorite for the photography turntable. This is the one we're likely to follow. So that's what you're basing this calculation on. Once you're on that offering, you're going to open up your AMZ Scout extension again and it's going to be the item right at the top here. And you can see if we click on that, it does give us these extra options for this item. Click on Profit Calculator and in here, we are going to input our product cost. And as we already calculated, that is going to be $26 in this case. Again, that is your landed product cost. Everything from manufacturing and shipping getting it to the Amazon warehouse and available for sale. Now, if you're aiming to sell this at a different price point, a lower price point or a bit of a higher price point, you can adjust the price here as well. And it is going to calculate everything else for you. Your pick and pack fee, which is your FBA fulfillment fee, your referral fee. And then at the bottom here, you can see your total FBA fees your profit per unit that you sell and then your net margin. In this case, 55%. Now, something I want to point out here is that this number here is usually going to be quite a bit higher, your referral fee. This obviously sits in a category with a lower referral fee, but very often this is going to be 15% of that sell price, which would make it something like $12 or $13 or so. So it would be a bit higher, but we would probably still have a net margin above 40% here. In this case, if it's categorized in a lower referral fee category, that's great because it's obviously boosting our margins. Another thing you might find useful here is we can see a 55% margin. But what you can also do is deduct about 7 or 8% from that to account for PPC. Because remember, you're also going to be paying for sponsored ads as you sell this product. And once optimized, you can expect your total advertising cost of sale. This is between organic and sponsored listings, all your sales to be about 7 or 8%. In other words, you deduct 7% from 55% and you're left with your actual expected profit margin, which would be more like 47, 48%. And if we do the exact same for our whiskey glass set, open profit calculator 
and again we're dropping in our cost here. And here it was $10.50. Once again it works out our fees. Here you can see this is a 15% referral fee, 15% of 50 and we would be left with a net margin of 49%, also really, really strong. We would actually make $24 per unit. Once again, you can deduct your expected PPC spend of 7% or so from that, and we would still be at over a 40% profit margin, which is magnificent. And lastly, let's do the same for our glass jars. If we open the profit calculator, we're gonna drop in our cost here, and once calculated, you can see our pick and pack fees a bit higher here because again, when you actually put those jars together, it's a bigger package. So here we're actually ending up with a 37% margin. If we then add PPC costs to that, we're now going to be at about a 30% margin, which is not so good. And so in terms of profitability, doing the jars, that might be the most challenging. And so at this point, once you have an idea of the costs, the profit, the differentiation possibilities, how you can develop things, one product should really start to stand out. If you're stuck at this point, I really recommend you make a pros and cons list. So this is what I've established from these three offerings. Let's start with the photography turntable. The pros here, it's an undersupplied market, there are terrible listings. There's some low quality products here. There's a lack of customer usability, like the sellers are not listening to what the customers want. For example, with so many of them not including different color tabletops. There's a huge potential to stand out on a main image with packaging. All those main images look really similar. Demand is likely to grow in the future. There's also two primary keywords here. One is rotating display stand and the other one is photography turntable and that can make things like targeting keywords and PPC spend a little bit easier because you have two routes to your market. It's definitely premiumable because it's in the photography market where people spend a lot. This is a type of product that could have a great promotional video. The larger size of these products still remains within the large standard size for FBA fees, which is good. The market tends to lack advanced sellers. So it's either a new or emerging niche or just something that other sellers are not finding. It's likely to be a cheaper PPC spend and a cheaper launch for you. This market is evergreen. This product's gonna be bought winter, summer, doesn't matter, it's used indoors. And there's also a really high profit margin here of 47%. Although that's something I would work out more closely. And remember, you might not want to sell a product at that high of a price at like $89. You might sell for less. So if you do this product, just be careful on the profit margin. Make sure it's over 40%. So that's the good stuff. The cons here, there's not huge demand currently. And that can be a big turn off for a lot of sellers here. They're not seeing huge sales volumes. They might worry it's never going to pick up. So there is lower demand here. Electronics do you have the malfunction drawback. They might get a bit broken during transit or customers might see malfunctions or just get frustrated with the electronics in the device. And apps, if your product is app enabled, can really frustrate consumers. And it's also something you need to then evaluate and maybe even build out on the product side if it requires an app. Since it's electronic, this is also something that's going to require different plugs if you ever expand into other markets. And moving on to our glass jars for food storage. The pros here, very high demand here. These products are selling a lot of units. Customers are choosing based on the offering rather than reviews, which is an awesome thing to see. Although this is actually a simple product, we see a lot of variation and that gives rise to our ability to develop this product further. Sellers often avoid niches where glass is involved. So if you're willing to take the extra steps to protect this product very well, then you're going to see less competition in niches that include glass. And this product's evergreen. It's gonna be bought all year. So the cons here, glass can break in transit. 
So unless you're careful and you take time to design good packaging, you might have a lot of broken units on your hands. There are some high review competitors here and that might scare off some sellers. There are some very strong listings here and savvy sellers, they know what they're doing. It is a more mainstream niche that other sellers are likely to find. Multiple jars in one package results in a bigger overall package which can increase FBA fees. This is also premiumable only to an extent because this is also a very functional product people buy for its purpose rather than design. This is likely a more expensive launch and you're likely to pay a bit more here on PPC. And here we only have a 30% profit margin after adjusting for those PPC costs. So this is the worst on profit margin. And moving on to our whiskey gift set for men. The pros here, high demand. People are selling a lot of units. Customers favor design massively here. They are choosing based on offerings, not reviews. And we have a lot of evidence for that where they're choosing a lower review offering based on the design of the product which is great for us and then tied in there some very low review sellers are selling extremely well this is highly premiumable because it's a gift it's bought in large part as a gift and people are willing to spend more when they do that. This one has huge creative development potential and it's something if you spend time developing it really well, the customers will notice. This is not differentiating for differentiation's sake. It is a perfect example of a product where if you listen to your customers, it's going to pay you back. This is an excellent size product for FBA. A lot of sellers again are going to avoid this one because it involves glass. What I also like about this one is it could allow you to create a niche focused brand where you focus on whiskey, whiskey accessories and that becomes your niche. If you spend time creating a quality box and packaging for this, the glass breaking issue should no longer be an issue. So you can kind of work around that. And we have very healthy profit margins here at 42% after adjusting for PPC. So that looks great. The cons here, there are some excellent listings and good sellers. In fact, this is one of the best listing quality score markets I've ever seen. The sellers are spending a lot of time creating amazing listings. And even if you don't do this product or any of these, I recommend you go look at this market because the A plus content is incredible. There are some high review sellers here. You do have the drawback of glass potentially breaking in transit. And this one again is likely a more expensive launch and a slightly higher PPC budget. And so guys, after this full evaluation, all the pros and cons, my personal favorite is the whiskey gift set for men. And that's because the premium price due to that giftability combined with the product size is going to result in heavy profit margins. Then you combine that with the fact that this has the biggest product development potential. We can really get creative and create something very, very good for these customers based on their feedback, something that's going to get be valued and be highly unique jump off those main images and of course this also has a kind of pathway into creating a brand within this one niche. That said, the photography turntable would have to come in second place for me, simply because the jars for food storage just had that lower profit margin estimate. So I'd go secondly with a photography turntable, being very careful on product quality and as, as well as size for those FBA fees, make sure that that's going to be profitable. And in last place would come the jars. I do think there's opportunity there, but you've got to be very careful on cost. It's going to be a quality cost war, I can see with that product. If you go higher quality, people will love you for it, but are you going to be able to charge a price they're willing to pay and still be profitable? And if you're still stuck at this point, which you really shouldn't be, another thing you can do is actually draw out your envisioned main image of your differentiated offering. Draw out each of them and look at that and say, is this enough? Would this convert? Would this look different enough on that main image? Is this addressing customer concerns? Then you can even ask a positive objective person whether or not they would buy your offering 
offering or consider your offering or if that would address their issues is that the one they would want most that can also give you invaluable feedback but really at this point you should be down to one looking at profit margin which is the most a emotional way to decide how much you can actually develop that product and how much customers will appreciate your development of that product and your ability to stand out by doing that and lastly competition in that market or customers acceptance of the lower review items between those three you should really be down to your final offering and at this point of course you're going to go ahead and start communicating with manufacturers and once you find some really good manufacturers you are then going to get samples from those manufacturers choose the best manufacturer actually list your product on amazon begin manufacturing and start selling again guys if you like the look of amz scout check the links in the description you're going to get a special bonus if you use that link as well but i hope you guys are ready for 2021 i hope this sets you up to find your next product and i will see you in the next video